Welcome everyone to uh, today's session from Learn WordPress. Um, this is a fun one we've got today. Uh, this is the story of the custom post type lost in a world of pages brought to us uh, by Alicia St. Rose. Um, and I am going to hand it off to her um, to get started. So let me stop my screen share. Okay. All right. Take it away, Alicia. Share my screen. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about myself. Um, oh my goodness. Hold on a minute. All righty, I think I'm gonna have to try that again. I'm using um, Stage Manager on my Mac. And so sometimes it does really interesting things when I try to share. Okay, here we go. All right, can you see my uh, my screen? Yes. Oh, awesome. So I'll just say a little bit about myself um, beyond what I said in the beginning, just a little intro. I, um, I am a storyteller. I like to tell stories. And I find that sometimes people get the gist of something technical when it's an actual story and you can relate. And so sometimes when we talk about technical things like custom post types and and other the block editor and things like that in WordPress, people wrap their head around this technical aspect of it. But in my line of work, is which is web development, the content and the strategy and the structure before you ever build anything is what's important. So with that said, that's why I'm actually doing a real story here. I mean, when I say um, once upon a time, it's not something that I use casually. I actually legitimately mean we're going to be starting a little fairy tale about a custom post type. Um, I also wanted to, as we're doing the story, to see if you can recognize this story happening on your website somehow. That would be interesting. And also, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for... Um, the legibility on the slides, but you don't have to worry about that part because I'm almost verbatim going to be reading what's on there. So with that said, uh, let's get started with the story of a custom post type lost in a world of pages. So once upon a time, there was a program page in a nonprofit organization WordPress site. This program page existed in a world of other pages, but often felt lonely and confused. About page, contact page, mission page, or mission statement page, and a host of other pages seemed satisfied with their lot, displaying content that was solid, necessary, and very unique, and they were happy to show up in certain places and just stay put. The program page felt it needed more self-expression and longed to connect with the other program pages it would occasionally see amongst the growing world of pages. The program page made the bold decision to look for something better, so it quietly slipped away. The program page wandered about for some days in the dashboard territory, not knowing where it would end up. Until one day on a strange and mysterious path, it encountered an unusual page. This page was joyfully moving around, practically doing somersaults. What are you, the program page asked. The rotating dancing page replied, me, I'm a post. What's a post? I provide the latest content and when I'm done, another post takes my place. And it's their 15 minutes of fame. Then I get to relax in the archive with the other post. What about you? I'm a page, the program page said sheepishly. Oh, well, sometimes I get mistaken for a page. But I'm pretty adamant about being a post because I'm dynamic. The post did a wild flip multiple times and def deftly landed on the ground. The program page's heart quickened. Dynamic? Yeah, dynamic. I like to move around, see more of the site. I also do the loop. That's fun. I can do that anywhere. A lot of times I loop around on the home page. I get to show off my authors and my birthday if I want to. 
And some posts don't like to let the world know how old they are, and that's silly. How will they know if they're still relevant? Anyway, I also have this cool badge, this cool category badge, so I can further distinguish myself. And the post proudly pointed to the star-shaped badge. Wow, you sound super happy about being a post at the program page. Yep, what's not to love? What's your topic? Topic. You know, what are you about? I'm new director takes the helm. Oh, I'm a program page. I'm telling the world about my volunteer outreach. Hmm, if you were a post, then we'd have to give you a programs badge. I've seen a few posts wearing that badge. They mentioned programs once, but that info is long buried now, unless it got some SEO love. We're really chummy with SEO bots because we're so dynamic. Uh, it's very hard to connect with each. Oh, I've seen other program pages like me lost in the world of pages. And it's very hard to connect with each other. And it sounds like the posts get to hang out together. Yeah, we do. We have a big blog world, a whole blog world. The program page grew excited and inspired. I'm going to go back to the pages world, find other program pages and bring them back to join the blog world and get a program badge. Sure, exclaimed the post. We'd love to have you. The program page hurried back to the page world and though it took an enormous amount of scrolling, it was able to locate most of the program pages and convince them to journey over to the blog world. A crowd of 20 program pages gathered outside the blog world. New director post had some deflating news. There are so many of you, there will have to be a lot of cutting and pasting, republish, republishing, etc. Very time consuming, sorry, the site administrator in the sky is not getting paid enough. All hope seemed lost until a great elder post called Hello World stepped forward. Long ago, before many of you were ever published, us elders migrated here from Weebly World. Tragically, we migrated into the pages world. A special magician called Post Type Switcher Plugin transformed us instantly into Post. I will try to summon it now by connecting to the infinite repository. All pages and posts were silent as Hello World Post concentrated and exclaimed, calling Post Type Switcher, activate now. With a flash, post type switcher appeared, a bold PTS across its folder, and it glanced at the stunned group of program pages. So you guys need to get in here, right? It asked, motioning toward the blog world. Okie dokie. In another flash, all program pages became posts, and the new director post quickly bestowed them with program badges. They instantly felt more alive and started dancing and looping. The looping gave them an advantage they never had as pages. They could connect more easily because they all had the program badge. So if the program post needed to appear anywhere on the site together, they could. The program posts were overjoyed and happily danced all over the site for a while. But soon it became apparent that being a post had its own share of issues. One program post stopped showing up with the others Somehow its badge only read uncategorized. So it got hopelessly lost amongst the blog world, which was growing faster than the pages world. Some program posts realized that while they were still program posts, they also were very different and were requesting a second badge to further distinguish themselves. Another program post was dealing with comment troll and couldn't understand why it had comments at all. The troll was making the program look bad and unprofessional. Seeing this issue, the volunteer outreach program posts all counsel with Hello World again. Most reverent Hello World, the blog world isn't the perfect fit we were seeking. We've, we're lost in other ways. It feels like a tangle of spaghetti with the extra badges, 
and it's too easy to forget to give us our badges. We're not all looping and dancing together like we should, and comments seem unnecessary. Hello World responded, I was afraid of this. Sometimes pages migrate to blog world because they think the category badges will fix everything. But what, oh, but just adding a category to a post that was once a page really isn't enough. But what can we do now, pleaded the program post. Well, perhaps the post type switcher plugin can help. Hello World once again summoned the post type switcher plugin and in a flash it was activated. After listening intently to the issues the program posts were having, post type switcher remarked, we need another type of magician. You see, I can only move you to post types that already exist. You need your own post type just for you and the other program posts. The volunteer outreach post grew excited. You mean we can put our own program world on the dashboard map? Exactly. Wait a minute. Let me go back. <laughs> exactly. Let me summon one of the custom post type plugins. There are many, but my favorite is custom post type UI. A grand flash blinded the program post for a moment, and there before it stood an amazing site, a giant golden plugin with CPT UI emblazoned on its folder, a multitude of twinkling sparks radiating around it. You called, boomed the plugin. The speechless program post finally uttered, uh, yes, uh, can you help me and the other program posts find our own world? The CPT UI, taking note of the word post, responded, Got all hung up in the blog world, did ya? That's no place for a self-respecting program. Your content is too important to get buried in the blog archive. Can you help? Well, of course. I got sticky buttons. Sticky buttons. <laughs> oh, that's great, said the, re said the relieved program. If you don't mind me asking, what are all those twinkling lights? That's my special magic. I'm shining light on a better way to organize the site and the dashboard territory. Each spark is a custom post type world being formed in a WordPress site. If you look closely, you can see what I'm making. The program uh, post focused on the sparks and eventually could make out words in each one as it flashed. Words like services and events, products, team members, recipes, locations, portfolio items. The sparks were never ending as the list went on and on. Wow, exclaimed the program post. Well, there's no end to what can be a custom post type world, remarked CPTUI. CPTUI went on to explain custom post types are dynamic and they loop. They can dance around the all over the site. They get badges just like posts, except they're called taxonomies. Custom post types can show up and loop together with the same taxonomy badge. They can have multiple badges or no badges and never get lost in their world. I will create a custom, I will create a program custom post type and you and the other programs will have your own program world. The program post was incredulous. Really? There are more perks to being a custom post type. You automatically get your own program archive, just like the blog world. Every time a program is added, it gets added to this archive. It's easier for the site administrator in the sky to find you all since you'll be gathered together in one place in the dashboard territory. Finally, CPTUI said, I think it's time to create program world. A new spark began to form and suddenly the word programs glowed with a brilliant light. The program world appeared in the dashboard territory. 
After post type switcher transformed the program post into true program custom post types, the programs gathered and entered their world. It was just as CPT UI had said, but there were even more pleasant surprises. For instance, when the programs got added to the main menu and all the site administrator in the sky had to do was link to an archive of already listed programs instead of building a page and how easy it was to loop programs in the query block anywhere on the website. Because Program World was such a hit, Staff World was formed. With the help of another magician, Advanced Custom Fields, specific programs could be connected to staff members who ran them. So, so a staff member custom post type proudly displayed looping programs on its single view, and the program custom post type could share the love and loop the connected staff member on its single view. Before long, more worlds popped up in the nonprofit organization WordPress sites dashboard territory. Resource world, case studies world, board members world, and others gave the site the ability to loop important information whenever and wherever needed, quickly and easily, thus creating a richer user experience. And the Brave Volunteer Outreach Program who started it all, it danced and looped throughout the site and the volunteer numbers shot up astronomically. Oh my gosh, the end was we'll skipped. It was actually just the beginning because it's time to free your custom post types from the world of pages. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's clapping. Who's Jean? Yes, <laughs> Jean is clapping. <laughs> I just want to know, people, you can come clean. Where mm -hmm. are they and what are they? <laughs> They're in your pages. If you all, if you, everyone wants to like, if you have questions, that's fine too. Uh, but also, if you if if you want to be honest and say that you do have like maybe too many pages and something, some worlds need to be created. <laughs> we have a comment uh, from John: Certified fresh, one hundred percent rotten tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Oz says, on the edge of my seat the whole time. <laughs> you guys are great. I love you. I, I feel like I, I, I have to pass the favor out because no one should have to sit through a boring tech talk. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> I can't be the person. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the first time I think that we've ever had uh, a story time as <laughs> one of our sessions. So it's well, a first plenty, and it's great. There's also plenty of time too, because I didn't want it to just be a story and you wander off because a lot of things were mentioned in there, the three plugins that I was talking about. Um, maybe we can go into details about, you know, um, when do you need to know you need a custom post type? You know, and that would be mm -hmm. before you make the website. Mm. Pretty much. Jean has a question. Should um, I stop I'm sharing making my screen? Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. And okay, 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 okay. Stop. <laughs> okay. We'll go into some questions. So Jean asks, um, or says, um, I'm making a page with links to forms. Each form is on its own page. Would this be a candidate for posts? Yeah, uh, custom post type, yes. I've done it already. I do it in a um, festival website. So the advantage of having a custom post type is that um, and I, I want to be open and, and transparent. For years, they were pages. And then I would always have to go digging through the pages to find them. <laughs> so then just this year, or maybe it was last year, I think, um, it might have been just this year, I decided, well, I'm going to make a custom post type, and I'm going to embed the formidable form on each one of those. And so now when I go into the dashboard, I just go over to applications or for, um that that's what I named my custom post type. And I go there and they're all just listed. They're just listed. And I don't miss one and there's the wrong date on it and stuff. You know what I mean? That's why, that's that world of pages that your forms are lost. They're, they need to go on their journey, but they can skip the, the blog part. That's why I put that in the story. Most people head over there, go into the blog. Mm. <laughs> it's not meant for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Do you have any other questions? Yeah, Jean says, thank you. Um, and one more comment from uh, Miguel. I have to pass this talk over to my students when this is on WordPress TV. Epic and very explanatory. Yeah, it's, isn't it? I mean, I I feel like there's like essence to all the things that WordPress can do. And when it gets too esoteric, people don't understand that they can grasp it so easy and then they can do the technical stuff later. Because what needs to happen when you're planning a website or even if you get inherited, if you inherit a website is that there's like the strategy this is the most important thing. That's the difference between a hot mess and a really um, uh, efficient, workable, user-friendly website. So a lot, a lot of this stuff would have happened when you sat down with your team or you sat down before you made your website and you asked yourself about your own business. And you said, well, what I have services, more than one. <laughs> so if it's more than one, that's like already a post type. And, and when you realize that when you're making a post type, you're now making an object that can move around and can have um, um, arguments in a loop. See, and now we're going to go a little technical, but now you understand <laughs> where we're going from. So when you do that loop that the post is doing, that's the original looper, <laughs> but your custom post type does it too. There are arguments that you can put a whole bunch of them. And sometimes when you use something like generate blocks and um, the query loop block, and you see all these weird things they're asking you to, to choose, those are the arguments that you would have written in code. Like, what taxonomy are we going to show? Or well, how many posts are we going to show? Or what the, like, the date on some of them? Um, are we going to alphabetize them? You know, things like that. And so when you make a custom post type, it takes more of the dynamic nature of a post than a page. A page is something that's almost like a statue of the old days, okay? <laughs> it's never supposed to move. It's all contact can't be floating around and be at the top then at the bottom next week. You know what I mean? It's gotta be there, there, there. So if you have pages like your mission statement or about and things like that, then you want to make that a page. But then all of a sudden now you're starting with, we got the president, and then we have the secretary and then we have and there is an urge to make pages for them. But isn't that the people who work there, like the team? So now you've got to think beyond. And so now what you will do is you'll make a team and they're, what their job position is, is a category or taxonomy. So you're able to do that kind of thing with custom post types, like give groupings to stuff. You can't do that with pages and it gets really rough. It gets rough after a while with thousands of pages. Yeah, I could get to that point. Um, Miguel <laughs> says, very good points. Um, strategy and maximizing the possibilities of WordPress structure and features. Yeah, thank you. Do we have any other questions, comments? Anything about custom post types that we could? Uh... Yeah, and does anybody want to see yeah. anything like We've got time because I can. Yeah, we have some time. I can probably spin up, spin up my um local or something. Yeah. If we want, if you want, <laughs> let's see. Let me go and get. Let me see. What we got. I Is it only it available on. with a plugin? Asked Robert. Wait, which one? Uh, Robert asks, "Is it only available with a plugin?" Oh no! In fact, that was painful for me to actually tell you guys to use. Well, again, but, <laughs> but I had to because it's a piece of code in the functions file isn't going to look so good showing up to talk to the little page that was a post or whatever. <laughs> so no, yeah. the, the easiest way is to find the code and save it and keep slapping it into a, a plugin that you made yourself so it's not in your theme. So let me see here if I can, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I can actually, um, Oh my gosh. I don't want to. Yeah, Jean that. asks, can you show us your application CPT? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. show you both. Um, let me, um, I think I've got a little playground site in low. Right. And I can install it. And I can also show you what the code looks like too. 
All right. Um, so do I have anything crazy on my desktop? <laughs> because like there's still gonna be so many windows open that I I need to like close this. Okay, let's see. Let me close that. Then we can close that one. And what's that? No, it's just my Zoom. Okay. And I think I'm done with the Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, we got like 30 minutes, this is gonna be fun. All right, so hold desktop. So I've got a local, uh, does anybody um, use local? It's free, You can. Um, I think WP Engine now is in charge of it. So you can download this and you can put up any sites and work on them on your computer. So that's really a good thing. And I, I, I think I've got this, uh, this WordCamp example site when I was doing something. And we can go in and Oh, is it? Okay, here we go. Dashboard, the dashboard territory. Um, So if we go to the plugins and get the, um, let's see, I, I should just, uh, it's on my computer. I don't have to worry about these updates. Okay, so we're going to add new and we're going to do the custom post type. UI. There's a bunch of different ones. Um, oh, we'll see. I have to. <laughs> Alrighty, I'll update. See, that's they're they're on it, man. Like they, you can't use it with old versions of WordPress. I like that. That's something you do want to um, make sure that you are keeping your plugins up to date on your live sites, especially. This is a uh, a site that is, um, maybe I shouldn't have opened this site. <laughs> this is a site that is a local, so it's not like there's no threat for anyone coming in and uh, hacking it. But if you're on a live site and you have 15 plugins that are not updated, I would suggest that you go and update those. Um, let's try my blueprint instead. Let's see what happens here. Oh, are we? So this is not the type of um, efficiency that I'm like down with right now. <laughs> so we gotta find, I might have to actually go to a real website that I work on with the clients and stuff, but I don't want to do that. It's going to be a WordPress TV because it's their, their stuff. So let's see if I can go into plugins here. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it's not letting me do that. All right. Let's do something really crazy. Let's do... Let's just start and create a new site real quick. You can I can show you how quickly you can do this. So this is local. I'm creating a new site, calling it um, Learn WordPress. And hit continue. Um, you want to use their preferred thing because that's you always want to develop kind of where WordPress is si situated. And <laughs> okay, I'm going to do admin password because this is um, local. So you can do stuff like that. Are there other people who are developing in the house? <laughs> Raise your hand. Otherwise, this could be boring you socks up. 
That's why I gave you a story. <laughs> this is the guy. This is my life right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, sounds like we have a few developers in here. Oh, good, good, good. They it's their life too. Like, oh my <laughs> <laughs> Let me see the chat. I can like I can look at the chat while I'm waiting. So um, while this is doing that, why don't I show you something? Um, oh, hey, I can go in. Cool. Oh my God, what did I put in there? I can't remember what I put in. Uh, I think I just did a password. Does anybody remember what I put in there? Help me. I'm looking for you guys for some help here. I think I, I put lowercase. Oh. Did I? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it was <laughs> obscured. No, I didn't do obscure. I didn't make it obscure. Oh. Totally did not. So we could actually have, have this happen. Oh, there we go. Today. So I didn't do that. So we hmm. move that. I know. I know you guys saw me. I was using the wrong password thing. Not good. Okay. So now if I go over to the plugins, this is going to, now we're going to do something. We're gonna have something happen. And I put in um, custom post type UI, okay. And it's right here, you can install it. And it's a million plus activations. So there's there's a lot of people who are, who are, who do not have that fable happening on their, their um, dashboard territory. So activate, and then a lot of new stuff happening. So you come in here and it says, um, add edit post types and taxonomies. Remember the taxonomy. So it's very important that you don't mix taxonomy and category. Now you can use it, mix it up when you're talking about it. Like you can say, hey, I have categories for my recipes. You can say that, but code wise, you're using a taxonomy because if you try to use categories in any kind of weird code, if you get that far, it is not going to work. Categories, C-A-T, cat, only works with blog post, and T-A-X works with um, with the uh, custom post types. So if I go here and I want to add one, it could be uh, right here. It says, what's the slug? And this is always part of the URL, okay? It's going to be part of the URL when they, when they do the archive. So like I could do recipe. You could do S or not. And so right here, if I put move, or I don't want to do that with the recipes. <laughs> recipes and then recipe. What this is doing is it's giving the, the, the words for all over the dashboard. So when you do pages, it'll say pages or page, or there's a page in the trash and da da da. da. And so um, it looks like you can migrate. It's cool. So you add the post type. And then you just fill out the rest of this with, and they give you examples. And so that you can have all of those words in the right place. And then it's already, um, the, if you wanna, okay, so if you, we added a new one and this is the edit. Okay, so if you were to have more than one, you could use this drop down and totally like scroll through them and, and do. I have a website that has about 15 custom post types. It's for a festival and they have stages and musicians and all this different stuff. There's no way that would work with pages. There's no way. It would have been absolute loony bin. Like what a loony bin. And so also when you're using custom post types, another thing about SEO and something called schema, um, if anyone's heard of that, it's like another level for SEO. It's when you put these schema tags on your content in your HTML so that they show up in these rich formats in the search. It works way better if you've got post types and you're doing it that way so you can group them. So all of this does, it's, it just helps um, set the, the foundation for all the other people that are gonna help you. Uh, uh, another instance in, uh, episode where it really worked really well for us at the festival um, we were having a company build an app that could be used during the festival. And so all of the participants had to be imported into the app. 
So because they were all their own post type, we could use um, all in one export import and a spreadsheet and it just imported directly into their app and they could put it in the music categories. They could put all that stuff in the right place. Now I want you to imagine if you had to do that same thing and then realize you went, oops, they're all pages. You, you actually wouldn't do it. You just say, well, we can't do the app <laughs> because there's just no way that that's a possibility that you would dig through all that. And, and, and it just makes these objects and these like bundles, it's so easy to manage. And, and then when you, you can just loop through them. And so like, even on the festival, I mean, I, we can go and look at, um, if I go, and look at, um, I guess it's the old one. We're going to go to the old uh, musicians. This is what I was talking about with an, an archive. It's got two styles kind of merging because there's a new design this year. But this is the archive that is dynamically created because I made a musician post type. Now I had to come in and style it, but it's I'm only styling one little div area that's looping over and over again these cards and that's what the code is. And so I'm able to do that. And then I'm also able to target the taxonomies and the terms because these are objects because pages don't have categories. So they're just gone. It's like, like there's not much you can do there. So you really wanna, there's, to be honest, there should be more custom post types and blog posts on your website than pages if you have a lot of information because there's no way that all that's unique and this like has to be one page. So um, yeah, so this was cool. And then um, it was a very easy to use Zapier because <laughs> we zapped uh, the musicians and other like the performers who were um, more like aerialists and stuff. They zapped to uh, workspaces on third-party platforms and I was able to do that very easy by saying, just zap, um, I'm going to use the formidable of this form and this, and a formidable has this amazing thing where you can target a post type and actually publish it. So I'm, we're not even posting these, like people submit their application through the formidable form and they hit submit and these are drafted until the curator says it's a go and then they come in and publish it and of course rewrite their bio okay because <laughs> they're musicians they're not authors okay so some of them are giving us song lyrics for bios it's kind of interesting so anyway that is um that's the that's what that's the magic that's the magic of having custom post types and and you can do anything it's like clay and it, and it integrates with so many different things so I hope I answered someone's question because I feel like I went all over the place because that's why I had to tell that story. <laughs> yeah, and just a, a quick little demo of how, how you use it. Oh, um, well, what I wanted have... to show you is there's a plugin, but this is what I do. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> Oz mentioned a... um, that she'd love a, a, a zap. WP uh, Zoom session sometimes. <laughs> oh, that would, be, that would be cool. So this yeah. is how I do it. I make a plugin, which, oh my gosh, I showed some people I heard that and was quaking in their boots, but all you need to do is go find a declaration, slap it in a file, make sure the file and the folder have the same name. You don't have to, but it's best practice. Then upload it as a zip into your, your um, plugins and then turn it on and then start writing this put if you put this code in that that plugin just putting that code in there then the shazam that's what i use so that i can find the word and then just um, replace so it's way faster than that plugin that's why i do this but if i showed you this first you would have been like no <laughs> <laughs> so I found this code years ago and I just keep using it again and again. You know what I mean? So the code's not scary. People think it is, but it's really not that scary when you get your pieces that, that worked and you keep them. So that's what that's how I do it. And yeah. then there's the taxonomy Thanks. part of that too. That's cool. Um, I was also asked if uh, there is a CPT repository. 
Okay, what do you mean by that? Could you like, yeah, oh, she, uh, she says, obviously, each CPT is specific to each site, but seeing other examples could be helpful in building. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. I see what you're saying. Like, well, um, there's really, I mean, the sky's the limit. It's, it's that. So let's, so let's, 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 we, how much time? We got 15 minutes. Um, who asked the question? Oz. Oz? Yeah. Okay. So she must have an idea of something, like even if it's just a vague idea. So if you're working on a site or you visited a site, is there something that you could think of? You just put in the chat and we'll play, let's make a custom post type out of it. How would we do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Let's people just see. like throw stuff in the chat like teachers for a school district oh awesome whoa this is fun so this is where you get the whiteboard out and you get the people on the team and you're like so what happens when we're trying to contact the teachers in the school district and then people come in and they want to know what teachers working with what and then people start going uh we have to go through all these pages and <laughs> don't know where they are so there's two custom post types there or there's a one custom post type and a cat and a taxonomy. So it depends on what is happening to the extent of like what's happening with the school district too. So the teachers could be a custom post type and the school districts could be a custom post type. And then you can use a plugin like advanced custom fields, which has an object um, connection field and we'll show up where the teachers are and we'll show up where the school districts are. And then you can actually see um, when you're on an edited school district, you can see which teachers are connected to it. And then when you're on the teacher editing her, you can see what school district she's connected to in the admin, but you can also um, like, there's like a plugin called uh, by theme code, Pro, uh, it's called Theme Code Pro, I think, and it's and it gives you the code that you would need for the advanced custom fields if you're going to put it in a template. And so what happens is those things loop on the page as well because you connected them. So that's that's one way of doing it. Depending on if the school district now would have to have different categories for the area it's at. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is like a whole strategy. It's like everything is so organic and so infinite. It could be like any example. It's just tailor-made for you. There's no, there's no like one size fits five people kind of thing. It's really about you being able to do exactly what you want because you have this ability to do these custom post types. So the teachers, if you were going to use it as the district as their category, then that, then, um, there would be a taxonomy page, just like a regular archive page shows up. The taxonomy page would be like LA school district. And then all the teachers who were had that category will just show up on that page. But it all depends on what you're gonna be doing with the website and that information on the ground and on the site. Because I the festival site that I'm working with yeah, the site's great, but there's a whole bunch of stuff happening that had, we had to shoot stuff to the app, going to like think something called Podio, um, not for long, but um, and then we're like, there's just so many things that happen, and so you you it it it's an exploratory discovery session that you need to have before you start making something, and so anybody who's enterprise level that's using WordPress, there's a team of people doing this for them. They're definitely using this custom post type thing. And Oz, um, Sally. thanks you for your insight. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, we've got one more question, I think. Um, yeah, Miguel is uh, asked about um, if it's possible to find your code templates anywhere. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> on the de WordPress developer, um, <laughs> do you guys have got to go there? You've got to go to, um, let me get in here. Um, watch this. Let's see something here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Custom post type code. We're, and I, the, the first should be 
yeah, here we go. Registering custom post type. You really want to go in here and do this because here's the thing. Um, see, we recommend that you put custom post types in the plugin rather than the theme. See what I'm saying? the reason why they're saying that, and that's a plugin thing I told you. You turn your theme off and change it to something else, custom post types go away. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. You want to make this plugin. And so he, if you go here, um, uh, oh my gosh, lots of things are starting to change. Um, they're going to tell you what each one of the labels and things mean. So it's not just that you want to copy the code and slap it somewhere. You want, actually want to, um, you want to, um, see here, I want to find the actual, this doesn't actually look like the clean version that I normally find. Um, maybe we can put that in. Um, I'll send you that link if when I find it, Courtney, for like mm -hmm. a yeah. the developer thing, because it, it has like that code in there, but it explains what each one of those is for. Because um, I do have the code, I use it over and over again, but that there is definitely a danger of like finding code and just slapping it somewhere and you don't know what it's doing with something else. So, uh, but uh, the, my code works, it does, but I just want to dissuade people from just doing that because um, you, you got to know what the code's doing. Is in, oh my gosh, it could be a nightmare. Yeah, Miguel yeah. also mentioned uh, generate WP, um, that your, your approach is very similar. Um, to generate WP. Um, are you familiar with that? Oh yeah, that's the one where you ask, um, uh, you you want to post type and it generates the, the code for you. And a bunch of other things too. I think I've been there before, yeah. But the way I do it is because I, I just, I'll, I like, I have a plugin for the Lucidity Festival and there's like that piece of code is in there. And there's a way of doing the code without slapping it all in. You can actually, do um, variables and stuff and just change names but I didn't do it I was lazy but once you have like 17 of those in the file you got to have search and replace has to be some unique word so it's shazam <laughs> that's a key that's a tip you find your code and put some, the word <laughs> this was fun <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I I'm glad that like the story w went over. I was a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was really um really insightful. Um, and I hope that uh everyone else learned something new today. Um, I know I definitely did. Um, Jean's comment um said that to you, Alicia. Uh, meetups with you are such fun, and your enthusiasm oh, is contagious. <laughs> Please come to my meetup. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot of fun, and it's not just me that makes it fun. There's a whole cadre of like ten people that we roam around because they geek gang or something, and um, <laughs> we were we welcome you to any of the meetups that we're at. There's there's mine, which is the South Central Coast um, Adventure WordPress Adventure Group. There's one in Santa Cruz that uh, my friend Eagle does. Eric Lukert does a whole bunch of them um uh mike pilly in bakersfield there's just so many they're all online online oh, that, uh, those names i i know all those names oh, they're great folks oh my gosh <laughs> we blur this? <laughs> yeah i That's shared so a link funny. to your meetup in the in the chat um and yeah um could you could you stop sharing your screen for a moment and yeah um we'll we'll wrap up it uh, looks like we don't have any more questions. Um, but if you do have any more questions, you can get in touch. Uh, folks can get in touch. Um, I, I'm going to share the screen one more time. Uh, so here's uh, Alicia's um, contact info um, on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it these days, <laughs> <laughs> at Intrepid Realist. Uh, and her website is wpwithheart.com. Um, Yes. Um, and if you want to keep in touch with the training team and with Learn WordPress, uh, you can join the WordPress Slack at chat.wordpress.org and join the training channel. And that's where we do a lot of this work on educational resources for the community. And if you're interested in doing um, a presentation, I'd um, love to help you um, 
you know, get that started. Um, and my contact info is here on Mastodon and LinkedIn. Um, and we wanted to thank you all for learning with us. And thank you, Alicia, for, for the story time and uh, poking around on, <laughs> um, on a test site with us. Um, this was great. Thank you. Let's see if we have any last minute uh, thoughts here. Yeah, lots of gratitude in the chat. So yeah, thank you everyone that, thank um, you. that joined us today. And we'll get this uh, recording up on WordPress TV uh, within the next day or so. Awesome. Yay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.